have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me camping. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me camping. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Hello, my name is Glenda Johnson, better known as G. Johnson. When I'm not busy, I like tuning in to Elations Radio on Saturday nights with Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow, Jr., where the topic of discussion is making marriage meaningful. It appeals to the saved and the unsaved. It's for couples who are married, couples who are thinking about marriage, and for those who are divorced yet considering remarriage. Now, this This discussion, making marriage meaningful, is the most explicit, authentic relationship talk live here on Elations Radio. So save the date and time on your calendar. We look forward to hearing and seeing from you at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 9 o'clock p.m. Central. So tune in to the broadcast and be blessed. Amen.
Welcome to Making Marriage Meaningful. This is your host, Apostle Irvin Whitlow. Hello, 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 and hello. God bless each and every one of you. Making Marriage Meaningful, we're so elated to be here. We do apologize for the lateness of certain technical difficulties that have tried to stand in the way. It's always on this uh, podcast that we have some kind of technical difficulty. That's because we are dealing with issues and, and, and things that the enemy don't want us to deal with, and that happens to be marriage and relationship in particular. And I really believe that there are things that God is doing through this podcast that is impacting lives everywhere, all over the world. If you are connected to Elation Radio, Speaker dot, uh, the speaker.com or uh, is Spricker Radio, iHeart Radio, uh, uh, any of those uh, radio uh, uh, opportunities. If you are connected to YouTube, you're connected to uh, any of those things or even to uh, Facebook, you know, we're sending out a message. We're sending out a message because we're seeking to help marriages all over the world. So we welcome you. Now, let me put this disclaimer out there while we're at it. I do not claim to be a relationship. I do not make that claim because I don't want you to say, well, apostle said so-and-so, so-and-so, and and -and so-and-so. No, I am not an expert. I just share things based upon what God has shared with me in hopes and prayers that something I share will help you. Also, I want to put this other disclaimer out there, that this particular podcast is explicit talk radio. It is really raw. It is really real. It is really relevant. It is aimed at helping you have a meaningful marriage. Now, I am not Uh, so big-headed as to think that I do it by myself. I have a panel of great men and women of God who are preachers and who are not, um, who have been in marriage or are married, and we just like to talk. Uh, From the the realm of uh, uh, experiences and the realm of scriptures and some good old cotton-picking common sense. So we want to share that with you tonight. Uh, so let me see who's here tonight. I know that the producer of the show is here. I wanted to say hello. That is the one, the only, the lovely Dr. Kimmy Robinson. Dr. Kimmy, would you talk to us tonight? Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm just going to be glad in it. And you're right. It all, they always bug with you. But you know what that is about. <laughs> it's a good topic that we're doing, and um, God is that's amazing. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Let me see if Lady G Johnson is out there tonight. Are you out there, Lady G? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he is good. Yes, I am here and ready. Hallelujah. Be glad to have you back this week. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me see. Uh, I know that this was in route uh, to getting here on the podcast tonight. Has you or have you arrived, Bishop Designate Ernest E. Richard Jr.? That means not yet. Okay. Uh, let me see about the big, great, grand apostle Vincent L. Smith. Are you here, sir? Uh, the the little the little pebble apostle Smith. Is on the air. This is my new friend, my newfound friend and brother is here tonight. I'm talking about Brother Otis Gabriel. Are you here, sir? All right. Well, perhaps duty has called him otherwise on tonight. Is there anyone else here online tonight that I have not mentioned, made mention of? I may not know that you're here. Would you introduce yourself tonight? 
All right. Well, good. All right. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to ask Lady G if she would lead us in prayer tonight before we get going. Amen. Amen. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Okay. Okay. Yes. Gracious Father, we give you honor and praise this evening. We lift your name on high because you are the source of our life the author, the finisher of our faith, and you are Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And because of this, we worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to come before you once more and again to communicate on this dynamic podcast, Making Marriage Meaningful. Father, we pray that this podcast would impact someone's thoughts concerning marriage tonight. We cancel the assignment of the enemy that may try to come in and cause chaos and confusion. Satan, we rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way on this podcast tonight. We pray that we decrease so that you will increase as we go forth in another podcast session on tonight. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. I want to read a scripture, and I'm going back to a scripture that we had been on for about a year, uh, because last week we concluded our lessons on I married the wrong person. At least I believe we concluded that for this point in time. So we're going in another direction tonight, um, and something that the Lord shared with me goes right back to Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 through 25. It says, God said, and I'm reading out of the Message Bible, God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a, him a helper, a companion. So God formed from the dirt of the ground all the animals of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would, call, what he would name them. Whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man named the cattle, named the birds of the air, named the wild animals, but he didn't find a suitable companion. God put the man into a deep sleep, and he slept. As he slept, he removed one of his ribs and replaced it with flesh. Then uh, God then used the rib that he had taken from the man to make a woman and presented her to the man. The man said, finally, bone of my bones. Flesh of my flesh, name her a woman, for she was taken from man. That's therefore so a man, therefore a man leaves his father and mother and embraces his wife. They become one flesh. The two of them, the man and his wife, were naked, but they felt no shame. The word of God for the people of God. Tonight I would like to pose a question and that question that question tonight is are you marriage material are you marriage material I have come to I have come to realize that many marriages don't work many marriages don't see and many marriages end up in divorce because the people who got married never took the time to discover that they are not marriage material. What does that mean, marriage material? Meaning that they have what it takes to be married. Because when we're children, we talk about the kind of person we want to marry and we talk about what we're going to do in our marriage and how it's going to be different from other marriages. But the reality is that we do not become marriage material. And so, therefore, a lot of people's lives have become miserable in marriage. And some people have been married and have stayed together not because they are marriage material, but because many people didn't feel they could do any better. Many people felt that they would lose their security. Many people that they felt that uh, nobody would want them. 
And then there are other things that people come up with, but the reality is they weren't marriage material. And so tonight, and for however long the Lord will say, I want to deal with this. Are you marriage material? You, ma'am, you, sir, you young man, you young lady, are you marriage material? Do you have what it takes to be married? Because at the end of the day, everybody is not marriage material. Apostle, uh, Apostle Smith, when you hear that, what goes to your mind? Are you marriage material? And I'm not speaking to you as the individual, but in general, what do you think to yourself about a person being marriage material? Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind was the word prepare. Are you pre prepared? Notice what I said. Are you pre which means, have you done the necessary things before marriage to be married? Are you free? <laughs> okay. Are you prepared? Have you done what is necessary to prepare yourself for marriage? Okay, I like that. Uh, Lady G. What do you think when you think about uh, someone being marriage material? What goes through your mind? Uh, uh, basically, what goes through my mind are, is that are you at the point? Are you um, are you at the point in your life, in your mind, uh, where you're ready to uh, leave the singleness, the uh, being single? Uh, in the single life, are you ready to uh, set that aside to come into marriage, which means family? Uh, are you ready to, are you prepared to do some of the basic things, such as cooking, cleaning, as a wife, as a woman, that is? You know, um, are you ready to give up all the girlfriends and partying and all of that? So in another way to say it, I guess, is your mindset, to be someone's husband, uh, to be able to uh, um, be that uh, helpmate uh, to that husband, to uh, just just be ready in all areas that it takes to be married. That's that's what comes to my mind. Uh, Doctor Kimmy, what comes to your mind when you think about that marriage material? What goes through your mind? Well. What comes to my mind when I think about marriage material, are you securing the Lord? Because you can have the nice things and you can be very nice looking on the outside, have a great body, but internally, are you secure with the Lord enough to the point where you know how to love someone? Because the world teaches you to give someone your all, but God teaches you to give him your all and then learn how to love someone. And he teaches us how to love someone. So do you have that? And secondly, um, are you material, uh, material? I mean, you have to be very mature in order to be able to submit to one another. Because submission is all about the husband submitting to Jesus, and then the wife is submitting to the husband. And can you, are, you, are you able to love on that level? And thirdly, financially, are you guys compatible? Are you equally yoked? And um, those are the things that you want to ask yourself when you're, you know, you know, you're dating someone. You know, um, does this person really compliment me? Not complete me, because only Jesus does the completion. And the last um, um, inventory you could you could uh, check off is where are you in life? Can you truly say that you are at? a good place where you're ready because sometimes we may not be ready and we rush into that um, a marriage not being uh, really ready. So being ready for me is knowing you yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually, and financially. So those are the things that would know, well, for me, that would, you know, help you realize if you're ready for marriage. You know, when I listen to each of you, when I listen to 
each of you. And uh, let me see, did Bishop Designate arrive yet? Did you see him, Dr. Kimmy? Has he arrived? No, but I do see another, I think, 301. A 301. Okay. Uh, Carla, would you identify yourself, please? Okay. I guess they don't want to identify themselves at this point. Yes, okay. Hey, uh, this is Brother Otis Gable and his wife, Teresa. Oh, we're God. on the line. I had it on mute. God. Okay. God bless you. So glad you're here. Um, I don't know what you have heard so far, but we're we're asking a question tonight. Are you married material? And you oh, are yes, saying I, I, that I heard your question. Yeah, yeah okay, I heard so your question, and I really like some of the answers that were given too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My my response to that mm-hmm. question would be that an individual uh, would know when they are ready for marriage. And look for all the happiness and all that the marriage entails, and to be happy, you know, with well, from a man's point of view, to be happy with my wife. Now, to be happy is a something that is um, really a highly sought after emotion, and everywhere it's even part of the preamble, you know, the pursuit of happiness. And happiness is not free. And so there's a, a price for something that is as valuable as happiness. And it calls for a few sacrifices, and it also calls for an investigation, just like we would investigate uh, something if we want to go on a vacation to a new place. It says, what is there? And what you take a look at things before you arrive, and that way you'll be better prepared for it, you know, when you get there. Like if you go into the beach, you say, oh, this place has a beach, I'll take my swimsuit. It has a lake, I'll take my fishing pole. So the same thing with uh, with marriage is you have to have, have an idea of what you're going to be getting into and not just to be living with so you can hug and kiss a pretty woman every day. There's a lot more things involved. And I like the one where the young lady said, um, about you had to be socially, economically, or uh, emotionally, and spiritually prepared for that. And there was another component that uh, I have looked at, you know, based on the uh, people who are married that I know and uh, my family members and myself, is before getting married, you have to look at some of the things that's going to affect your marriage. Uh, which would help you to be more prepared for it. Do you get along with the in-laws? If it's going to be a blended family, then how do you get along with the children? And how does a person get along with your children? And if they are boys or girls, now with a, uh, a blended family, if the boys are, say, after... 10 years old, boys don't really, they don't accept that blended family in most cases as readily as girls would. Uh, And that's another situation. If the mother is getting married to a man and she has boys, that one, it seems to have a uh, low uh, reception rate for the man coming in than women. And there's uh, there's just a lot of other factors that have to be prepared. But now, here's what I'm going to say for myself. Now, for me, um, I, there's a there was a test that um, seems to have been uh, issued, and that we came in contact with recently. And I just thought about it just a few days ago. So we are all familiar with this statement and question, say, if you were on a desert island, deserted island, who would you prefer to be with and would you like to take with you? And it 
wasn't an, I guess it was an accident that this desert island, which is called home, imposed by the COVID-19. And I've been home with my wife every day, all day, for over a year now. And we are having a good time. It's just like being on a year-long vacation. You know, we, we uh, watch movies together. We have all kind of nice things to eat. And we sit down and just have conversations, you know, for hours on end. And we just really enjoy being with each other so much so that um, it's going to be difficult to get adjusted to going out again, you know, once the restrictions are lifted. But that was a real test for our couples right now to see how they adjusted to one another and how well they got along during this particular restriction. Okay. Okay. When I listen to all of you, there is something that continues to repeat itself, and I believe that is uh, marriage material interviewing. Marriage material interviewing, which goes back to what I said uh, some time ago that uh, you have to discover him. You have to discover her before you can determine that y'all should be an item. What does it mean to discover? It means that you have to have some conversations that lead you into a place that is not ending up in sexuality but morality, spirituality, your economics, your your social environment, your culture, your experiences, things of that magnitude. And if your conversation is not leading to that, but is always ending up into a sexual conversation, you're not marriage material. You're looking for a bed partner. And that is not the same as being marriage material. So, therefore, here's the reality. If you are going to determine whether you're marriage material or not, you have to investigate. You have to interview each other. And please, let's understand, when we're talking about interviewing and investigating, we're not telling you that you should do as a as they do down at the precinct when someone has committed a crime, they bring all of these individuals in and try to get every individual to say a certain phrase or to make a certain kind of movement and hope that you're going to be picked out in that kind of lineup. No. What it really means is that your heart has to be drawn to an individual to discover him or her. And I did say that, that you have to discover him or her. Now, I want to go ahead and put this out there, and I'm probably sure that I'm going to get a few comments on it that's going to uh, probably not be too enlightened or too accepting, maybe. But, uh, you know, so many people have said that, uh, that, that, that Proverbs, I think it's 18 and 22, if I'm not mistaken, says um, that a man that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor uh, of the Lord. Now, I have a problem with that because I, I believe that the King James Version is the authorized version of the Bible. And I do respect other translations, but I believe that at a certain point, there, it, it becomes further and further away from the original translation. So I believe that the word that we should really be concerned about is not whosoever, but I believe the word we should be concerned about is wife. And why do I say that? Because when we go back here to Genesis, it doesn't say that uh, God said, I'm going to make the man a wife. That's not what it says. It says, I'm going to make him a helper, a companion. So, I, and, and, and another place, it is, uh, it is um, revealed as a, a, uh, someone who is suitable, someone who is complementary, okay, someone who is adaptable. So I believe the correct rendering is whosoever finds someone suitable, 
compatible, complementary, adaptable, finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. I know that people don't want to hear that because there is the notion that the man is supposed to go after the woman. Well, here's my problem with that, and I want y'all to hear me clearly. If a man goes after a woman, let me give you a typical example. All right, let me say, uh, here I am, I go after Dr. Timmy. All right, now, Dr. Timmy, I found you, so you're supposed to marry me now. Now, if she wakes up in the morning and she has a black eye, she don't have a reason to complain. Because why? I found her, so I get favor, and she gets a black eye. Because what? I found her, but she didn't find me. What I mean by finding is discovering. What I mean by finding is interviewing. What I mean by finding is investigating. So, therefore, if I, if I have found her, and can I get favor, and she gets a black eye, then nobody can really complain because that's what I discovered. But then again, does that make me marriage material? We have to learn how to maneuver in, in, in life according to the word of God so that we do not miss the things that God really wants us to get. If you're not finding someone who is compatible, if you're not discovering someone who is complementary, if you're not finding someone who is adaptable to you, if you're not finding someone who can match you, then you are not looking for someone who is marriage material. You're just looking for somebody, point blank, period. Apostle, what do you think about what I just said? I think what you just said is very true. I think it's very true that if you're not looking for the suitable, if you're not looking for the adaptable, if you're not looking for the help me, then you're just looking for a roll in the hay. And when you get finished rolling in the hay and got hay stuck in all the wrong places, then there's nothing left but the pain of the hate. What you need to do or what we need to do as people is start looking for somebody with like minded. That's something we that's something that we don't talk about neither. You got to look for somebody Uh-oh. with like minded. Somebody that's going if, if they drive in the car Make sure they go in the same direction that you're going. Don't jump in the car with somebody going north and you are going south. You, you're already even divided. You're already messed up. And you're not ready to be a couple. Okay, okay. Dr. Kimmy, what do you think on that wise? Dr. Kenny, take yourself off of mute. You know me pretty well. Um, I think the same way. You must uh, date someone who is like-minded. Like-minded individuals is, you know, important because I just remember my brother just mentioned that ever since him and his wife been um, quarantined, they've just been having the best time in life. And you should have fun with your partner. So you want to uh, date someone who is like-minded, someone who you can laugh with and have a good time with, because that is your um, help me. That's uh, you both are are in a marriage together to help one another, and so that is a beautiful thing when you meet someone who is your help me. Okay, amen. Uh, uh, G, anything you want to add? Uh yes and, and and you know they pretty much said it all and and the bottom line is uh compatibility you have to be going in the same direction if you're going north and I'm going west and I'm going south or east I mean what good is that you know uh unequally yoked uh we're in this because we have a few things but we're unequally yoked going different ways and that's not going to work so you know in your interviewing process you want to make sure that uh, people are, the person that you choose, 
that uh, that you all have uh, some commonalities, uh, and those commonalities should weigh outweigh uh, the few things that maybe you don't have alike. So that's all I want to add to that. Wow, there has to be commonality. That is a very crucial word. Commonality. You have to have like-mindedness, uh, the same ideologies, the same ideas. Uh, you know, even if you come from different backgrounds, different upbringings, because watch this, watch this. A lot of, we, we must always remember that children live what they learn, okay? So, uh, uh, so what they see is what remains, and it matriculates into their behavior. So I was sharing with someone that, you know, when I grew up, I grew up watching, you know, married couples who had been married for years sleep in separate rooms. And I'm thinking, well, if you're married, why are you sleeping in separate rooms? So I grew up thinking that was normal. So when I got married and, you know, there was some kind of different dis- disagreement or something, guess what I did? I slept in a separate room because I'm thinking it's the right thing to do. I'm saying that because somebody right here is wondering what's going on in their marriage, and they're questioning themselves, am my marriage material because I'm always angry? Am my marriage material because I always want to fuss? And my marriage material, because I always want to cuss. I, I want to do things that are uh, maybe not physically harmful, but emotionally and spiritually and mentally harmful. And if you are that individual, there is a good, 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 good possibility that you are not marriage material. And this is the thing. There is such a, a failure in marriage that we have completely let's if we want to if we're going to stick to scripture let's go this route if we are go if we are only going to divorce because of infidelity then many people have to need to get back together with their with their mate whoever that mate was if we're going to do it that way because we missed it if that's the only reason we're supposed to break apart is because of infidelity and the truth be told many of us are not breaking apart because of infidelity many are breaking apart because of irreconcilable differences many are breaking apart because they don't see eye to eye many are breaking apart because they don't speak the same language Many are breaking apart because they can't even stand each other. Oh, there are some things that we can certainly say, but the reality is these are signs of those individuals who are not marriage materials. That's why there's some people who are tell me, I don't want to be married. I ain't thinking about being married. I ain't interested in being married. I never wanted to be married in the first place. And then the worst thing I can I can stand to hear people say is that God is my husband. God is my wife. God is my lover. God is my, this. God is my, I have a problem with that because when I check, God is holy. And when God said that he is, uh, uh, when, he got it, when God said, I'm your husband, he was talking to the children of Israel and how they treated him. Okay, this is what he was talking about. Uh, 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 but, 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 but the way that we make God sound is like, uh, well, God is going to make sure that I feel good all the time, especially when I feel a little um, heated and I need some attention, or should I say t- hot and bothered and I need some attention. Oh, God is going to do it. For- Let's tell the truth. God is not interested in that with you. That's not how God flows. Okay, see, people don't want to hear about that part. So the question again is, how do we define what is marriage material? Let's let's talk. Is Bishop Desmond back yet? I've been waiting to hear from him. Are you back yet, sir? Are you here yet? Okay, he's not here. Okay, so these are some things that we have to really be concerned about. I really like the word that was used by Brother Otis Gabriel, investigation investigation you have to and there is a twofold investigation that is necessary you need to investigate yourself and then you need to investigate a potential 
mate. Before you start investigating her or him, make sure you investigate yourself. Because here's the thing that's true. A lot of people don't know themselves. Oh, boy. A lot of people don't know what their limitations are. A lot of people don't even know what their weaknesses are. A lot of people don't know what they can tolerate. A lot of people don't know what they're willing to deal with. So before you start uh, investigating this individual over here, you need to investigate yourself. So somebody talk to me about self-investigation because I think that Lady G was talking about are you mentally um, and are you prepared within yourself uh, for a marriage? So let's let's talk about this self-investigation. Uh, Hello, anybody? This is talk to me. Real speaking. Hello, yes, can ma'am. you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Um, How are you? I was fine. I was listening to the comments, and I agree with a lot of them. Um, I feel that the investigation period should last at least a year. The reason I say okay. that is because yeah. you get to know this person and you really want to learn about them and, you know, how they respond to some of the things that you enjoy doing, like the holidays. Holidays important to them. Do they like vacations? What type of habits they have, um, their likes and dislikes, whether they're family-oriented people, and uh, and most of all, if they're dependable. And I think if you um, kind of like go through a year and, you know, just do things together and find out what you both like and have in common, uh, so things like Valentine's Day. Is this someone who uh, is interested in, in honoring you on Valentine's Day and at Christmas and your birthdays, you know? Because marriage, when you get into marriage, it's like a dance, and you have to learn how to dance together. So that mm. that was my comment. I think you should um, give yourself a year to um, learn about each other and, uh, you know, your likes and things that you um, have in common. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. I like that. Give yourself about a year. That That is good. That is good because a lot of people rush. And because they rush, then they say, why did I do this? What was I thinking? And then they're disappointed. All right? Um, come on, somebody. Talk to me some more. Talk to me about this self-investigation. And I love the fact that you got to give yourself about a year. All right? Somebody else talk to me about this self-investigation. Yes. Apostle, also, also, I, I want you to look at this in the self-investigation. Why are you getting married and claiming you don't like the kids? Why are you getting married and claiming you don't like the talk? Why are you getting married and you really don't like somebody touching you? All of these are intricate parts of the marriage togetherness or the or the fact of being married. And so if you don't like to kiss, you don't like to talk, you don't like to be touched, then why are you becoming anybody's mate? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's another issue. A That's another like issue. That, you to say to themselves like to until there's some kind of deliverance or something. Because you're headed for trouble. Uh-huh. That's right. That's true. That's true. Anyone else? Talk to me. Anyone else? Because I'm liking what I'm hearing so far. Come on, talk to me. Don't let this dead air go. Come on. Let's go. Amen. I agree, I agree with what was just said. Um, marriage is a uh, big stuff, and you want to get to know that person. I really believe that it's a beautiful feeling to get to know someone with the first year because you get to know, you know, their likes, their dislikes, and you're still going to be getting to know them as a, for a lifetime because even after marriage, you're still learning new things about that partner or about that person. So it's ongoing. And even after marriage, you still want to continue on learning each other, having fun, and 
just enjoying one uh, one another. I think sometimes people get relaxed in marriages, and so I I'm just going based on my you know experience and my. But when you become so relaxed in marriage, it's very hard to have fun. So it's always fun, you know, just have fun with it. So I know Maya's coming, so amen. What you say? You know yours is coming, okay? I know we have to talk about that. We have to talk about that. We're going to talk about that, but not right now. Uh-huh. We're going to talk about it, but not right now. Okay, so so here's where I noticed. Uh, right? Hello? I'm trying to stay with hello? Yes, hello? Uh-huh. Uh, can I add something? This is G. Johnson. Come on. Um, when you spoke about uh, investigating yourself, can you hear me? Because I hear a lot of static going on, so I'm not sure. I hear you. Okay. Um, I, I think one of the uh, was a was a valid point of investigating who you are uh, yourself, which is giving yourself a check off list. Uh, you know, something that said Apostle Smith saying, you know, uh, if you don't want to be touched, if you don't want to be this, uh, um, do you like the things that go along with marriage? Checking, doing a check off list, uh, trying to find out, you know, uh, if you don't know yourself, you need to be doing a check off list. Uh, to see if you are a uh, marriage material that you will be able to blend with someone else. And I, I'm going to say this only um, as far as the time period, I don't believe you should rush into anything. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's a certain time period on it. I'm not saying that it could be a year, it could be two years, it could be whatever time it takes to – Find out all the things you need to find out. Uh, what are they like when they're upset? What are they like? What are they like? Um, you know, uh, around the holidays, do they like some of the things that you like? Uh, and and I'm not saying that you have to like everything a person likes. Uh, one person might like football. The other person might like baseball. I mean, I'm not saying that you have to uh, see everything and do everything, but um, but Finding out all the pertinent things that you need to know before making a major uh, step such as marriage. Uh, I have known people in the business that I do. Uh, I know one of my coworkers because she has hello because yeah. she has because she has uh, I'm gonna say she she's she kind of knew. She said that she met married her husband in six months. Okay, it's still lasting to this day. So Hello? that's why I'm saying to, to put a, a certain number in a lot of sex. Come <sighs> finish your statement. Yeah, I was just say, I was just saying I me personally I um. I have to disagree with the time period um, because I, I don't think there's a certain – everybody's different uh, to the point where you find out everything that you know. That could be six months. That could be a year. That could be a year and a half. That could be whatever, you know. Well, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, but but I don't think that uh, Sister Gabriel was making – uh, a year, the final timeline. She was saying, give yourself. Oh, I know, oh, I know she was. Leave. Yeah, I know she was. So, but, but I, I wasn't say, saying I that she was. And I, I, and okay, but I, I can say this because of people that I know. I know a pastor right now. He was in the airport, and he heard the Lord tell him that a woman who was standing at the gate who was engaged to another man was his wife, and they were in the midst of a heated testimony service right there in the airport. He said that he walked over to her and said to her, excuse me, but you are my wife. That's what the Lord said. Have a nice day and walked away. Two weeks later, they got married. They are still married today. That was 40 years ago. So 
So all I'm saying is everybody in every situation is different. Now, statistics say that in 90 days of conversation without testing one another, you should know if this is something or less because something is certain. Life is not getting any shorter. If you have to make up in your mind whether you're going to or not, at some point, you're just wasting your time, and you're not getting any number in wasting time. So I agree that you don't want to you don't want to reach yourself, but you don't want to lose yourself either. That's it. That's what I wanted to say on that. Why? Thank you because that's very valid. Nobody needs to rush. Nobody needs to rush. But at the same time, you ha- you need to know if you are at least on the same page. Because I don't want to be with somebody who is not interested in ending up in a marital relationship if that's not what they want. Because I don't need, listen, I don't, I, I don't, that don't hold out of talking. I'm just tired of talking. All this, hey, how you doing? Oh, you look good. You know, I was thinking about you. I'm tired of talking. And listen, I got some other stuff that's working in my life that I just ain't going to want to do no talking. That's just the reality. So I'm just putting that out there. Amen. Glory to God. So, uh, uh, Brother Gabriel, was there something that you wanted to add or say? Okay. All right. So, when I'm thinking about this Hello. investigation, <laughs> yes. No, I was I was just talking, <laughs> and I looked up and saw I was on mute. No, the um, okay. the marriage can be a wonderful, wonderful place to be, or it can be the worst time of your life because it normally it may last a whole lot longer than you had expected or should want it to. And so the way to avoid those problems is to try to be as certain as you possibly can before entering into that long-term or forever contract. And keep in mind, too, you must always bear in mind that time brings about a change in ourselves and in other people. And not only it brings about it brings about a change, it also time also introduces new situations that we may have to contend with and now we don't know how the how the other person is gonna react to that. Like they say it's not what happens, it's how we react to it. It could cause some uh, could cause some problems in marriage. But again, that's like what you always go back to is go back to the Bible and take a look at it and take a look at your spouse or spouse to be. Amen. 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 That's very good. Very good. Very good. So I was I was looking at this. And I wanted, I was trying to determine how do you know when your marriage material or not. So what I looked at is, watch this. God said it is not good for the man to be alone. All right. So because it was only a man, he was talking to mankind at that time. So that man could actually be a woman. It's not good to be alone. This is what the Lord says. But here's what I discovered that 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 some people prefer to be alone. So a person who prefers to be alone is simply not marriage material. Why? Because like uh, Apostle said, you don't like being touched. You don't like to communicate. You don't like kissing and all of that. That's because you prefer to be alone. You're not marriage material. We're not judging you. That's your choice. That's your preference. I mean, some people were made to be eunuchs. Some people were made not to be touched. I mean, this is why uh, they're starting to uh, allow marriages in the Catholic Church 
because they realized that a lot of those uh, uh, priests and nuns have needs that cannot be ignored any longer. And they are tired of the boys uh, in the Catholic Church running around saying, he touched me. I'm sorry, that didn't come out right. Okay, God. Okay. They, they, they're tired of that lawsuit uh, uh, coming against them that uh, this boy has been touched by this priest. That boy has been touched by this priest. And then you got nuns who are turning up with babies, but they can't say who the daddy is. So that's why in the Catholic Church, they are now allowing marriages to take place because they realize that though they might are, they, they may uh, potentially uh, be described as eunuchs, a lot of them don't want no eunuchs. They don't want to be eunuchs. Uh-uh. And a lot of them, they're not being castrated, and they are not wearing chastity belts. Why? Because they want somebody to love them, somebody to hold on to them, and somebody to ride them, and somebody to make them back it up, and some other things. That's just the reality. Amen. But but I'm looking here. But I'm looking here, and this is important to understand. Watch this. God said it's not good for the man to be alone. So people, some people prefer to be alone, and I discovered that the reason some people prefer to be alone is because some people are just too independent. Oh, boy. What do I mean too independent? They can do it all themselves. They don't want nobody to be a part of what they're doing. They done been by themselves so long that they are accustomed to making sure that they eat if they want to eat, get their hair done, get their clothes, feet done, or, or dress themselves up, go out on the town when they want to. They don't have to answer to nobody because they are too independent. And a person who is that independent just really don't want no marriage. So they're not marriage material. Anybody want to say anything on that? I will say something on that. The individual that wants to be independent will make it known that they have no desire to marry. And some of them just want something to do for that particular night. They don't even want a real relationship. They just want a, a temporary fix. And don't make me say it out loud. You can read between the lines and what I'm saying on that. But here it is in a nutshell. How do you know somebody's marriage material? Let's think about this for a minute. Men are the visionary. God gave them vision. Women are the detailed people. When God gives you, and I'm not going to just say for Christians, Christian and non-Christian alike, when you have a project or you're moving forward in a particular situation or circumstance that's going to be a benefit not just to you but other people, that woman comes alongside to help. She doesn't ask questions. She just do what needs to be done. Your marriage partner is that person that's willing to go to bat for you, to work alongside you, to move forward with you. Your marriage partner is not that individual that's asking you five million questions because anybody that's found a wife, I heard you mention the scripture earlier, whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing. I'm not going to sit here and say whether that's male or formulated. Here it is in a nutshell. If, it, if everything holds true, then we can answer that question right here and right now. If God gave men vision and gave women ability to customize that vision, that right there tells you what's going on. I want to build a house, but I need someone to come alongside me to build a home. Does that make sense? Hello, absolutely. Well, that's, that's where absolute, I'm going yes. with that. Yeah. yeah. I want to build a house, but I need someone to help me build a home. You know, I'm great at building a house. I got the the architectural foundation. I know what I want, know how I want it to look. I know what I want uh, to what it to be like. But then I need somebody to come by and fine-tune that home to make it comfortable. It's got to be a place when I come home, I'm just absolutely ecstatic to be there. I'm walking in. There's a nice, comfortable atmosphere. Uh, there's not, you know, there might be food on the table. I'm just hypothetically speaking on the food part. That don't necessarily have to be true. 
You know, it's a warm environment. It ain't some place that every time I come up on my street, I'm ready to drive past my house. No, that's not a home. I like something that the late Luther Vandross sung when he sung a song, A House Is Not A Home. And there's a truth to that. Yeah, I know you're saying, well, why are you digging on a secular side? Well, there's a truth to what the man is singing about. A house is not a home. Yeah, a chair is just a chair. Even when no one's sitting there, it's still a chair. But a house cannot be a home unless you have someone who has the ability to help to furnish and build it. The man can put the home, the house together, but the woman really is the one who knows how to make it yeah. a place of comfort and security. That's all I'm saying on that. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Anyone else? I know he didn't really okay. mean anything about this, but I heard I a lot. And as I said earlier, Relationship is learning to dance together. So I just heard I an awful lot instead of we as far as building a home. Oh, no, I didn't say I. I never used I. I talked about what the man, when I talk about the man's vision, as I said, men are headliners, visionaries. You can use either word. They interchange. Women are detailed people. That doesn't mean women can't be visionaries, but what God gives to a man, he doesn't give to a woman because they both complement each other. I mean, why would you want uh, two of the same thing? You don't. I'm not using I in anything. God uses that man to build that house. God will use that woman that's called alongside to help to come and to help complete that house. That's the partnership right there. In a marriage relationship, it works the same way. With me and my wife personally, she has strengths that I'm weak in, but I have strengths that she's weak in. But at the end of the day, the two come together, intertwine to cause whatever is needed and necessary for the overall success of that relationship to move forward. There's no I in team. Never has been. And that's see, but but again, when, when you when you talk about marriage material, again, when you have that one who just prefers to be alone because they're too independent, they are too independent. They are so used to doing by themselves that they really feel that they don't need anyone uh, because they're all right alone. And and I, you know, and I think to myself that. If you don't have someone to share your success with, then it's really not success. If you don't have someone to share your laughter with, then it's not really good laughter. See, see, um, can be, I offer a challenge to that, Apostle? I want to offer a challenge to that. Because I can be successful with or without a woman. But to have one who has been with through the hard times, through those difficult times, to have one who's been with me in the building of that success, there now becomes that sense of real accomplishment. I could be successful without a woman, but having that woman walking with me and working with me is just a viable option, not a viable option, but a viable, uh, it it becomes a situation where my success is that much more magnified. Because now, and I'll give you the perfect example. For years, I had an outreach. You know about Power to Stand Outreach Ministry since 1989. It wasn't until the year 2019 that Sister Richard and I launched Power to Stand Outreach Ministries, the church. And I had been talking about launching that church for years, but it wasn't until she came. It wasn't time. God knew exactly when it needed to happen. And I used that analogy to pour out the illustration that I had the vision, but it took my wife to come and to help that vision to get launched. That's all Mm -hmm. I'm saying. Well, well, I hear you. Now, now we're talking, see, see, uh, a ministry being launched, is not the same thing as um, the value of success because at the end of the day, what makes marriage 
so powerful is the fact that it brings along validation. Mm-hmm. And so, so a person, a person by themselves cannot validate themselves. I don't care how hard they won't they be able try. to. I they agree. They will never validate themselves. So but therefore, she, it, again, mm-hmm. therefore again, it is not good for that individual to be alone. See, part of it's part well, of, listen, of, of the marriage. Part, hold on. Part of the marriage is to be developed as an individual. Not only that. But part of marriage is to help you to uh, develop in society. You know, you know, and so if you don't have something at home to help you develop, how do you expect to develop abroad? Well, See, the bottom line is this. I, 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 but the thing you're saying here is when we're talking about someone who wants to be independent, that's obvious they are not marriage material. I mean, you know, Stevie Wonder could see that. Ray Charles can see that. The five blind boys of Alabama can even see that. But for the individual that has a heart's desire to be married, female, male or female, there has to first be a desire. And now you don't go look for somebody that is like you. You look for somebody that is of like precious faith. You look for somebody that can compliment you, somebody that can help to put together those areas that you may not have a lot of strength in. If I'm going to go out there, for me personally, I mean, there are a lot of things I can do, but I'm going to try to narrow it down. If I'm going to go out, I'm going to try, I, I drive a truck for a living, I'm also a real estate agent, I do all these things. I'm just going to use the truck driver. Why would I, do I want somebody else that can drive a truck just like me? Or would I like somebody who knows how to handle the business, or the trucking business? Is it better for me to bring in somebody that can hold a steering wheel, mash an accelerator, and shift a few gears? Or is it better for me to bring in somebody that has some of the nuances and the intricacies of the business so that we can make some money, so that together we can prosper? Which one makes the most sense? And this is what I'm talking about in marriage. You don't go get the same thing. You don't go get what you already got. You go get what you need. But here's the idea. Reality. Here's the reality. You're not going to get what you need when you're so independent, because in your independence, you feel that you're the total package. And so in your mind, there's nobody who can add to you. In your mind, okay. and when I say your mind, I'm talking about an individual. In that I individual's hate- mind, there's nobody to them, there's nobody who can take away from them because they're doing fine by themselves. And, and this that's is what I'm point. saying. They so don't need anybody. So therefore, that individual is not marriage material. But yet well, you have people that. who are married with this mindset and they think and they're trying to figure out why their marriage is not working because they're so independent that they're not allowing interdependence. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. Well, I mean, if you're talking about somebody that got married and then decided that they wanted to be on their own, now that's a whole nother story right there. I mean, it's it's quite it's, – how can two walk together, first of all, except they be agreed? And if you're not in agreement, you won't need to be in a marriage. I've, I've experienced this, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, where my supposed spouse – in the beginning, was walking with me, and instead of continuing to walk with me, they walked away from me. You know, the vision hadn't changed, the desire hadn't changed, where the, the way I was going has not changed. Something or someone along the way changed the individual who's supposed to be walking with me. And so she turns around and walks in a total different direction. Now we're going in opposites here. I mean, the bottom line here, Apostle, is if you are not with me, why are you trying? Don't put on a show with me. Just take off. I'd rather be by myself. If you're going to sit there and sabotage what I'm trying to build, I'd rather you just, just leave. Go. Oh, bye. That's pretty simple. Well, I hear you. I hear you. Again, I hear you, but the reality is that we're trying to discover if someone is marriage material. 
Uh-huh. And so being uh-huh. being too independent suggests uh-huh. you're not married. For, look again. Look again. Let me show you something else. Again, it's not good for men to be alone. We say that some people prefer to be alone. Why? Because they're too independent. Then, in, in, in not only in being too independent, many of them are too selfish. And those Normal. are the ones who is I this, I that. I did this, I did that. I can do this, I can do that. I don't need, I don't want. Why? Because they're too selfish. And if it came down to it between saving their whatever they did and saving somebody else's life, they will choose saving what they did. Why? Because they're not marriage material. I need somebody else Selfish. to talk to me. I, I'm not hearing no others. Uh, let, let someone else talk for a minute, Bishop Desmond. I'm going to shut up. Matter of fact, I got something I got to do, so I'll be on mute. Come on, somebody. Let me hear you. Oh, Jesus, nobody don't want to talk to me now. <sighs> this is, uh... Um, keeping it across. Uh, uh, this is about Otis Gabriel. I think this is a very good topic about uh, marriage material that uh, too often we don't take an introspection to see if we are fitted. Uh, we're looking at what brings us maybe uh, pleasure and happiness even though it may be just temporary. And uh, that is what we that what we will be reacting to. But as far as being marriage materials, understand what marriage entails and for a long range and say a lifetime contract and then decide if that's what you would like to do. And one other thing that I like to always bring up is that each person each one of us um, has a different personality from everybody else that we're talking to. And then, but basically we're the same, but then there's a lot of specifics and particulars that are quite different uh, that could become deal breakers in a marriage. And you're right, if a person is a uh, confirmed, I think when you said that independent person, uh, yeah, many, many people like that, I think they're called, like what, confirmed bachelors or forever bachelorettes or whatever they are. They just, they say they don't want to get married. And uh, sometimes, sometimes that person has had a bad experience or they have witnessed bad experiences or they could think they have everything that they need, you know, for a good life. And they just may not want to share that with another person. So, yes, in the, being, being independent uh, would have a tendency to, you know, be a shield against someone coming in and providing that other half, uh, which would be many people like the Bible, they help helpmate. They say, I don't need any help. So that, that would be a barrier to uh, that individual getting married. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Anyone else want to talk to me on that wise? Uh, I'd just like to add um, in reference to uh, what the gentleman just said is that um, some people may just may be afraid and they have fear based on, as you said, what they've experienced before, a bad relationship or whatever. So some people may uh, just want to be alone because they've gone through the fire in past relationships. So they may deem themselves as not having being uh, marriage material. Not that they're uh, selfish, not that they're this or that, but because they may have had some uh, past experiences that may not have been to their liking. So, um, you know, so sometimes they may... uh, uh, get married for the wrong reasons, uh, for security, you know. So, uh, but but does that mean that they're marriage material? No. Um, but again, I, I believe some people are just fearful, uh, which can make them uh, not marriage material. That's all we want to add. Amen. Amen. Come on, Doctor Kenny. I haven't heard from you in a while. 
You can jump off a mute. Let's go. She don't went to sleep. Apostle Smith, come on, talk to us. We ain't heard from you in a minute. Oh, I'm not asleep. I'm sorry. I'm here. Um, I was just trying to talk. Basically, I agree with what was said, and you do find those who marry for, you know, lifestyle. You do find those who marry for the out, um, the outer look that we look, we look good as a couple. Um, however, it doesn't make them marriage material. And I need to beg to say it's not always true that people who are independent aren't good um, marriage material too because there are times where you have to be independent just because you're alone. It's not that you don't want to be married. There are some who do want to be married, but they just have standards. And so when you have standards, it's very, very, very hard for someone who is used to doing things on their own to just accept anything. So basically marriage material is based on, like I believe, is being being at a good place, uh, knowing who you are in the Lord, and you are ready mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. Because when you are ready, God – and then I had um, a friend of mine telling me this. Before she got married, she started – uh, pretending that she was married, like if she would go to the store and buy like a toothbrush, she'd buy two. Or if she buy like a dinner plate, she'd buy two because she was preparing for her husband. So you do have those who do that, even if there are they are single and independent. So I really believe it's 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 a you know, you have to be in a mind frame to be married with the Lord. You have to understand what it means to be married, and when you do understand that. You know, everything else will come into place. You know, the conversation, the uh, the uh, the unequally yoke, and you know, if you're unequally yoked to that individual, it definitely won't work. So that's why I really believe me. I really believe a minimum six months is good for me. I need six months. <laughs> yeah, because the first three months, people are always on their best behavior. I really believe you start to get to know someone after the three months. I really do. So. Hmm. Yeah, you got to know them after the three months. I concur with that. But we we, we have to be realistic. And in being realistic, we have to know that uh, uh, it's going to be a put on. You don't find out. You don't find the real truth until after everything is done. Then you find out what's real, who's real. And what they're all about. That's just me now. So please hear what I'm saying. Now, again, again, we're, we're, we're talking about all your marriage material, right? Which, which again, it requires self investigation. It it requires uh, uh, that 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 interview with self. So you have to ask yourself: Am I too independent? Am I so into myself that I can't see anyone else a part of me and what I'm doing? Not only that, am, am I even willing to put someone else's happiness before mine? Because if you're not willing to put uh, someone else's happiness before yours, guess what? You're going to be disappointed. In marriage, because you don't get married, you don't get married so much for you. You get married so much for the other person, because you're letting that person know you mean so much to me that I don't just love you to be with you. I love you because I want to add to what is supposed to be into your life, not become a burden, not become troublesome, not become a headache not become a load, not become a weight, but someone who's really interested in your success, someone who is interested in your well-being, someone who is interested in your purpose, your destiny, and all of that. A person who is too independent doesn't consider that. A person who is too selfish does not consider that. What do I mean they're too selfish? Because 
they are not, they don't want to get married because they don't want to share. It's because, why? Everything is mine. This is my house, my car, my money, my life, my this, my that. That tells me you're not married for Tilia. Because when you get married, you give up the me for us. So it's no longer, I don't care if you had it before I arrived. When I arrive and we're talking marriage and we get married, then it is ours. And I'm just as responsible for it as you are. I have to take care of it just as much as you should. Because it's not about me anymore. It's about us. It's about we. This is we are about. But a person who's selfish, that's not their thought. So, therefore, they're not married to children. Now, let's, let's be real. How many people do you know who are married and they will tell you that their mate is selfish? You know why they're saying their mate is selfish? Because their mate is not marriage material. I know I'm not going to get many amen. I know I'm not going to get too many hand claps. But it's the ugly truth and somebody got to tell it. That's why marriages are failing. Because people are married and they're selfish. Think about themselves. And that's it. That's all that matters is themselves. You married to somebody and want to be intimate with them. Not tonight. I got a headache. You got a headache seven nights a week? Not tonight. You know, it's that time of the month. So 30, 31 days of the month, you you flowing? Really? So you must be like the, the woman with the issue of blood. That's selfish. I think to myself, he said, wait a minute. I think to myself when I watch Why Did I Get Married, when I look at Tyler Perry's wife in that movie, Sharon Leo, she went and had a tube tied while she knew that her husband wanted another child. That's selfish. She's so into her career that she ain't thinking about him. This is what I'm saying. You're so independent, you become selfish. You're so selfish, you're not thinking about anyone else or anything else. That says you're not marriage material. Can I get some closing thoughts tonight? I guess I done messed up real bad. Thoughts. Oh. Okay. No closing thoughts from anybody. Okay. Well, let's just say thank you so much for joining tonight, making marriage meaningful. I appreciate your time. I appreciate all that was said to each and every one of you. Uh, we thank you, Dr. Kimmy, Lady G, uh, um, brother and sister Gabriel, uh, Bishop Designate Ernest E. Richard Jr., Apostle Vincent L. Smith. We thank God for you and what you shared with us. I was on uh, mute, Apostle. Uh, I apologize. I'm sitting there All talking, right. and I realize I'm on mute. You can't say much when you can't be heard. Bottom line right. is basically, and this is one closing thought just from yours truly, and I believe that I'll probably stick to my guns on this one. In looking for marriage material, don't look for the same. Don't look for something that's like you, because then all you're asking for is an added mess. That's all I'm going to say. Amen. Amen. Thank you so kindly. Thank you so kindly. Um, Apostle Whitlow. Uh, this, 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 sir. Apostle Whitlow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, this is Brother Otis Gabriel. Uh, before we do close, I would always like to give you thanks for uh, sponsoring uh, this worthwhile and interesting, inspirational uh, discussion on Saturday night. It just caused us to think about some things that we normally would not even uh, broach, uh, approach in any other time because the atmosphere and the conversation uh, doesn't move to this part. It, it, it also by asking this question tonight, are we marriage material? It would just cause me to think about that. 
to become more and better marriage material. It's not just be- before you get married. But you can even improve on it after we get married. So thanks for the topic tonight. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you very kindly. Amen. Amen. So listen, we're not out of words tonight. We're simply just out of time. We do invite you to join us next week, Saturday night, 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 Central, for more Making Marriage Meaningful. And I always say this that your marriage will be meaningless until your mate becomes meaningful. Go with God, and he will, and he will go with you. Dr. Kimmy, I need you to drop it like it's hot. Rock. <laughs> the rest of you, good night. Drop it like it's hot.
what the world. 